Joining us by phone now, Scott Brenner, a former spokesperson for the FAA. Scott, good of you to be with us tonight. Your take on what we've learned so far. Hey, Megan. You know, unfortunately, we don't know much, um, although it does not sound good. Uh, normally, when you lose contact with an aircraft, that usually doesn't, uh, it doesn't end well. Uh, one of the things that has, um, one of the advances we've seen in, in some of these uh, newer Boeing aircraft is they are constantly connected uh, with all their um, I important data that's constantly being communicated to their home base. So as you saw, if you recall in the Air France flight, Air France flight, that, that was the crash, the 447, that was going from South America to Paris. And it, it, it too, lost contact with Tower, and we didn't find it for a little while, and we didn't know what would happen. But we did know uh, at the time that the aircraft did start to have trouble, we were getting all kinds of data reports back at the home base showing what was going wrong. So I would assume that Malaysia Airlines has some indication of what was happening with the aircraft right before they lost contact with it. Interesting. So that, and we have videotape of, of the wreckage of that flight. That was Air France 447. It went down on June 1st, 2009. It was going from Rio to Paris. 228 passengers uh, were lost as that plane seemed to disappear in the middle of a very bad thunderstorm. Ultimately, the wreckage was found over the Atlantic Ocean. Today, uh, we, it's a different type of aircraft, and it seems to have been a route that was mostly over land. A Reuters news agency is reporting, Scott, that, it was, that the plane was lost, that the, the contact was lost over Vietnam. I want to ask you about this plane, because they say that this is a, this is a relatively safe uh, aircraft that it has a relatively safe history, a Boeing 777-200. What can you tell us about it? I, I can tell you they are incredibly safe aircraft. Um, they basically can fly themselves. Um, unfortunately, a lot what we've started to see recently, though, is pilots are starting to rely too much on the aircraft. So if one, if they get a faulty signal somewhere, they may not know how to, to correct it. So we saw that with the Air France crash where their speed indicators weren't working correctly, and as a result of that, they did not uh, adjust the aircraft uh, correctly. We also saw that with the Asiana crash in San Francisco. Pilots become too comfortable with the, uh, the aircraft that can fly itself because the aircrafts are so smart now, Megan. They know exactly what to do in all kinds of situations, except if you have a breakdown somewhere in that technological part of the aircraft. Scott, your thoughts on that, because we all ride it, you know, fly on airplanes, and we all, I think, take comfort in knowing how incredibly safe they are and how incredibly rare it is for an aircraft to go down. Um, you know, as somebody who used to work for the FAA, when you hear a situation like this, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, aircraft malfunction, terrorism, uh, pilot error? I mean, what, what does it tend to be, or is there no pattern? You know, every, everything's a little bit different, so it's really kind of hard to say a pattern. Sometimes it's a little bit of a technical problem compiled by pilot error, compiled by something else. There's always a chain. There's usually not one thing that will bring an aircraft down. It's usually, you know, a, a, a series of events that ends catastrophically. And, you know, we, we still don't know what's going to happen here. Um, but, you know, the air traffic control system is pretty robust. So you don't, you don't lose the site, you know, uh, the little dot on the, uh, on the screen uh, unless something bad has happened. Mm -hmm. They seem to be suggesting we're at that place. We'll wait yeah. to find out more. Scott, we may come back to you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And